Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today it's time to talk about one of my favorite things, the Stanley numbering system. Now this is kind of a fun thing because here I have the Stanley 2 through the Stanley 8. I don't have the 1 and I'll be talking about that a little later. And I'm not going to be talking about the numbers that go higher than this. So the next thing in line is a 9 and then they go on from there. I'm not going to be messing with those. Today I want to be talking about the standard Stanley numbers. What are they used for and what's the difference between a 4 and a 5 and a 6 and where are you supposed to use them? Do you need them all or what are the specific things that you do need? So let's actually dive in and take a look at this. Okay, so we have here the Stanley 2 through the Stanley 8. I don't have a Stanley number 1 because they're around $1,000 each, and they're pretty much a worthless plane. There aren't a lot of great uses. Now, there are people out there going to say, yes, they're great for chamfering. Well, so is a block plane, um, and these you can pick up for five or six bucks. So I don't have a Stanley one. Someday I'll probably pick it up just so I can finish off my collection, and I'll bid, build some sort of housing thing for it to show off this glorious item. But for right now, we're not going to talk about the Stanley one. And if you want to know about it, it's like this long. So it's a tiny, tiny little plane. So between plane two and plane number eight, these all have use. I've used them all at one point or another, and sometimes this is the perfect plane for it, and sometimes this is the perfect plane for it, but do you, how do you pick that? And a lot of people are gonna tell you this is the plane you have to use for this purpose, and this is the plane you have to use for this purpose. And for all of that, I have to say that it's absolutely worthless. You can use any one of these planes for any purpose. You can shoot miters with an eight or with a two. You can smooth with an eight or with a five and a quarter. Uh, you can joint with a two, you can joint with a six, you can joint with an eight. You can do any task you want with any of these planes. Now the general rule of thumb is the shorter the plane, the better it is for smoothing. And the reason for that is it can go up and down through the grooves of the wood. And then the larger the plane, the better it is for jointing. And that's why generally the number four or the number five tend to be the planes you're gonna be using the most. So the number four and the number five are kind of in the middle of the pack and they can do all the smoothing you'd need but they can also do the jointing, which is what the bigger planes are. See, this will span across gaps. So if you have a valley that you're planing through, this will rest on one side and it'll rest on the other side, but it won't cut in the valley. It will only cut on the high points. So this will actually joint a board and flatten it out. Once it's flat, then you can come back in with your smaller planes and you can smooth it out. So the general operation when you're dimensioning boards is number one, you bring in your scrub plane. Now Stanley makes an actual scrub plane which is outside of this number, but I normally take a number five and put a big cambered iron on there and I have an entire video showing how to do that. This takes off a lot of material very quickly and it makes the, the, the surface of the wood just an absolute mess, but it takes the thickness of the board down very quickly. So once you're done with that, then you come in with a five or a six or maybe a four and you flatten it out. You take out all the ridges and the marks left by the scrub plane and you get it fairly smooth and fairly flat. Then you come in with your big honking beast and you joint the board perfectly flat. And this will get it to a, a point at which you can put any type of measuring device on it. No, the board is perfectly fat, flat, it is twist free, and it is ready to go. But then every now and then these big planes are gonna leave some issues because they're cutting a little bit deeper than what you wanna do for your final pass. They might leave a little bit of tear out. And that's where you come over here into your little planes and you get these small number two, number three, number four, and these will actually ride up through so you can hit one area and just spot clean up that tear out that you had. Yes, it's gonna leave the board ever so slightly undulating, but not enough that anyone can feel it. And so you can do the detail work with one of these and clean them up and do the final smoothing. So that's kind of the idea between these. You can do all of those operations with just a four or just a five. You can smooth with this, you can joint with this. It's not quite as good for smoothing because it's a little bit longer. And it's not quite as good for jointing because it's not quite as long as you want for a big board, but you can do them. And the same thing with the number four, it's a little bit better at smoothing than jointing, but it can joint and it can smooth. You're just gonna take a little bit more time if you're gonna be doing the jointing on it. So now let's actually go through the numbers and explain this because it gets very confusing. Here we have a two. A two is short and small. It's a little bit thinner. You have your number three, which is a little bit wider and a little bit longer. It's actually pretty close in length to the next one, the number four. And you see how these are, are relatively close. You're about, uh, what is it, a half inch longer with the four. But the four is a little bit wider than the three. And so that allows you to clear off a little bit more space. Then we're gonna skip this one and this one. We're gonna jump up to the number five. The number five, is a good bit longer than the number four. It's the exact same width. 
works. And the number five is generally called the jack plane because it's the jack of all planes. It's the one that can kind of cover all of your bases. Then we're gonna skip this one and we're gonna go up to the number six. The number six gets wider again and it is even longer than the number five. And then we're gonna go up to the seven. The seven is the same width as the six, but it again is longer. And then we're gonna get up to this beastly honking thing. This is the number eight. The number eight is even wider than the six or the seven. It is the widest of the Stanley planes. And it is much longer. It's 24 inches from tip to toe. So that this can join a lot of material and can do a lot. It has a lot of weight, so that its own mass will carry it through a lot of the problems and is a, a ton of fun, but holy cow, does it take a lot of pressure to push that much weight through a cut. Now I skipped a few planes in here and that's because after making the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Stanley came back and they said, you know, we need a few other planes in between. And so they have the four and a half. It is a little bit longer than the four, but it's also wider than the four. And a lot of people really like this one for smoothing because it takes out a wider area, but still has a relatively short base. And that way you can do a lot of the spot cleaning up to uh, run in between with that. Then there's the five, the jack plane, the favorite one, the one that everyone has and the one that Stanley sold more of than any other plane. And this one, they kind of riffed off in two different ways. They have the Stanley five and a half, which just like the four and a half is a little bit longer than the Stanley five. And it's also a little bit wider. It happens to be the same width as the Stanley four and a half. And so you get that same length you want, but covering a bit more in the width. And then they said, you know what? We need something like the five, but we want it a little bit between the two. So this is the Stanley five and a quarter, which gets really confusing because most people think the Stanley five and a quarter should come between the five and five and a half, but it doesn't. It comes before the five. Don't ask me why they didn't call it the Stanley four and three quarter, but the five and a quarter is much thinner than the five. And it's also a lot shorter than the five. And so this is almost like the jointing plane, but it can still do a little bit of jack work because it's still longer than the four. So all that being said, this is a confusing pile, just basically going from the number two to the number eight. But if you think about it, two, three, four, five, six, seven, those are the main ones, the five and a quarter, the five and a half, and the four and a half are ones you don't see that often. And you can just eliminate those and go down to this and have your two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So then the question comes down, do you need all of these planes? No, no you don't. Uh, if you just need one, you can get away with just using the four or just using the five. If you watch Paul Sellers, he uses just the number four almost exclusively. It is a very versatile plane. And if you have a straight edge to tell you if something is flat or needs to be jointed, you can do it all with a number four. And uh, a lot of times that's where I kind of lean to as well. The number five is generally considered the jack plane. It'll be the one that'll do everything. And that's why a lot of people um, kind of consider this to be the first one. It's also one of the more common planes. Um, in most places you can find the number five far more often than you can find any other plane. So generally I would say, if you have a number four, then you're probably gonna wanna get a six or a seven as well, because then you would have your number four for smoothing, you have your six or seven for jointing, and you're good to go. With those two planes, you can do all your work fairly easily. But then you're probably gonna want one in the middle, and then you're probably gonna want one that's a little bit wider, which the four and a half has a lot of good features for, and before you know it, you're a playing collector, and you have them all. <laughs> So do you need them all? No, you can get away with one or two or three or four and kind of look at them as buy the one main plane that you want, buy the four or the five and go off from there. Do you find yourself doing a lot more jointing? Then get a longer, maybe a six, maybe a seven, maybe the full eight. Or if you find yourself needing to do a lot more detail and smoothing, maybe then look at getting a three or a two. And I tell you, the three is really good for smoothing and getting into those spots. It is the one I grab most of the time when I want to just detail a little bit of work. Uh, how's that? Okay. So that is the numbering system two through eight. And then the next question a lot of people is gonna get, what about all those other planes out there? Uh, where does the low angle jack fit into it? And other things like that. The next plane in the series is a block plane and then a miter plane and then I think a scraping plane. And from there on out, the numbers are kind of pointless because Stanley gave them the number the next one as they issued them. So the next plane they issued was the number nine and the next plane they issued was the number 10 and the next plane they issued was the number 11. 
and then they came back and they wanted to put one kind of close to it and so they put half marks on it. So you have the nine and a half, a block plane that's slightly modified. So all the other numbers out there aren't particularly in any other order, they're just the next plane that Stanley issued and it was given the next number in order. So then on top of that, not only do you have different size planes from your two to your number eight and back and forth, you also have different ages. So originally Stanley made the type one, that was the first one that they made. And then they made the type two and the type three and the type four and on to like 1920. And every one of these planes then also comes in a different type. So you can get a Stanley number two, that's a type one through type 20. And you can get a Stanley number four, that's a type one through type 20. And as they went along, they added different things. This one doesn't have the frog adjustment knob and the depth adjustment knob is a lot smaller. And then later on, they added some other items on there. They added different logos. And some people really like some things and they don't like other things. And so that's why a lot of people collect a particular type of plane and they'll have the entire series with a type 13 or a type 10 or whatever they want to collect. And at that point, you start realizing that every hand plane is different. Not only are there Stanleys, but then there's Miller Falls and all these other ones out there that then fall into the exact same pattern as the Stanleys but they have their own bells and whistles and things that they add to them. The big question I get from a lot of people is why isn't the low angle jack somewhere in this? It seems like this should fit in there. I mean, it's the same length and size as a number five. It just has the lower bed angle iron on here. And that's because traditionally, the joiners and woodworkers would be using all bevel down high angle planes. That was the plane that you used. You didn't have any need for a low angle plane. Stanley issued the number 62, the low angle plane, to basically be a butcher block plane. So all that end grain sticking up, the low angle plane made great work of cutting through all that grain. And then on top of that, a lot of people picked it up for doing miter trimming and picture frames and things like that that you can do on a shooting board because you're cutting a lot of end grain. But other than those two common uses, it really wasn't a useful plane in the shop when you already had all of these. But then along came the power tool hybrid people and they started using one of these because the bevel up angle really makes a lot more sense to the power tool mindset because the blade is now in line with the force. Though it is a bit simpler and easier to work with, so a lot of people, when they're not going to be using all these planes and not getting used to them, this is a lot more fun for that. So I don't want to get into too much into why this plane isn't in the system or why you should definitely have a bevel up versus a bevel down plane. Um, I have an entire video where I go into one versus the other, which one is better, and in the end, really, uh, whichever. Um, I use this one a lot because I like it actually a little bit better than I do my number five, for most things, but that's probably because my number five really isn't that very good. Um, it was one of the, the cheaper ones. And one of these days I might get a better number five, in which case I might not use this much at all. So everyone has a different taste. So next time you come to me and say, hey, I have a Stanley number 53 and what do you know about it? I'm gonna say, I don't really know because I don't know what the Stanley number is on it. Uh, what type of plane is it? <laughs> Anything outside of the two to number eight is just a random number out there. But in the one to eight range, you know that generally the smaller the number, the smaller the plane, um, except for when you get into the halves or quarters, in which case then it gets a little bit confusing. Stanley tried to make a system that everyone could follow, but in the end, it ended up being a little bit more confusing than just having a random item number for everything. And I know on top of that, I could talk about this topic for a long time. So I know there's a lot of other questions out there and people are gonna be wondering, what is this, what is that? Um, how does that fit into this? Or how does it relate to other companies? This is the Stanley numbering system, but a lot of people will even have a Miller Falls that is the same length and the same width as this that the Miller Falls gave a different number to, but they'll still call it a Miller, Miller Falls number five. That's because it is following the style of the five. So if you have another company out there and you call it a number five, everyone's gonna know you're talking about this size and shape, not particularly talking about that company. And that's one of the nice things about the numbering system is that it can make things a little bit easier because you know what you're talking about. When someone says a number four, you know that they're talking about a plane that's this long and this wide and does pretty much what the Stanley number four will do. So if you do have other questions, let me know down in the comments below. Feel free to like, share. This really does help out the channel. Uh, also, if you'd like to go back and see, I have an old video where I talked through the series. I mentioned a few things in there that I don't mention here, and I mentioned a few things here which I don't mention there. I'll leave a link to that down below. And then I have a whole other video on what's the difference between bevel up and bevel down, and which one's better. I'll leave a link to that video down below because I get a lot of questions from that where people are saying, well, which one should I get? Should I get a bevel up or bevel down? 
and go there and it'll probably answer it for you. So that's about it for today. I hope you like this. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Stanley two, three, four, four and a half, five and a quarter, five, five. Wow, Stanley didn't know how to count.